Hi everyone and welcome to Johnny How To. Today we're going to take a look at Wrap by Russian3dscanner.com. And as the name implies, this program basically takes a scan, whether it's photogrammetry based or an actual physical scan that you have, and shrink wraps it around a base mesh that you have. And basically it saves you from having to retopologize your mesh, having to fix all the textures and the UVs and everything, and basically does all this in an automated way. In this video I'm just going to go over the basics of the program, my thoughts on it, and we're going to go through some of the tutorial media that comes with it. And then in some other videos, I'll go into more workflow-based things and how I can get really more fine-tuned results that might be of interest and incorporate into your own pipeline. So with that, let's go ahead and get started. Like I mentioned in the intro, it uses nodes instead of layers. So if you're used to Photoshop or After Effects, it'll be a little bit of a departure from what you're used to. At its most basic, Wrap is going to take a source mesh, which we can see here. That's a 3D scan based on photogrammetry. Very, very dense, a lot of triangles. And we want to transfer this detail on this mesh. I want to transfer this to this nice streamlined version of a model that you would see more likely in a production environment. Now, to transfer this to this, we need to identify like points. That's what we do in this select pairs node. And if I use the visual editor, you can see I've identified like points. But basically, once you have those identified, you go ahead and run the wrap actual operation in the wrapping node. And what you end up with is you go from this base mesh to this, and you can see we have the basic character. What we end up doing is once we have our wrap, we can use this transfer texture node and transfer it onto this particular UV layout right here. So I do transfer texture, I look at my viewport, you can see now, and put it nicely laid out in a way that we kind of expect. And from here, we use the extrapolate image and it fills in the holes. So now that we're in a blank project, let's go through the functionality of the program itself. If you want to add a node, you're going to just right click, press tab, or drag and drop. I'm going to go and right click and load a model. So I'll go ahead and do load geometry. I'm going to go ahead and load the source scan that came with the program, which is called Alex. And I'll open that up. And here is our base mesh. If I want to hide the wireframe, when I have that node selected, I can go ahead and uncheck wireframe. But in this case, I want to go ahead and bring in its texture as well. So I'm going to right click, do load, save. I'm going to load image. And in this case, I'm going to go ahead and bring in his texture as well. Now I'm going to go ahead and jump forward. But once I go and plug in the texture, it will go ahead and map it onto the model. I'm going to go ahead and bring in the source geometry as well. And then we'll talk about aligning the points. All right, so I've loaded the source geometry as well. And if I want to solo a node, I hold down control and left click on the light bulb itself. Otherwise, any node you have the light bulb enabled for is going to show up in the viewport. I'm going to go ahead and right click and disconnect this pipe right here so I don't see the textured version of this. And I want to align these two nodes together. Now, since these are just called load geo one and load geo two, basically, I'm going to go ahead and press F2. I'm going to call this as my destination. I'm going to press F2 on here. I'm going to call this source. All right, so the first step I want to do is align both of these. You can see they're not quite perfectly aligned. If I go ahead and view them both at the same time, the eyes and the mouth aren't really in the same spot. I'm going to go ahead and do that by clicking on my source. I'm going to use the translation. You can use the mouse wheel here, and this is X, Y, Z axis. So I can go ahead and move this over a little bit. I can see that this, is, this guy's a little bit lower, so on my Y axis, I'll bump him up a little bit so the eyes and the mouth are more or less lining up. I'm going to go ahead and move him back over with the X axis. Again, I'm just using the uh, scroll wheel. And then the Z, it's not going to match up perfectly, obviously, since we want to wrap it around it, but I'm going to try and get the eyes and the mouth mostly in the same spot. From here, I'm going to go ahead and try and identify like points on both of these. So I'm going to go ahead and right click, do selection, and then select point pairs. And I'm going to plug in both sides. And when I go ahead and click on for the visual editor, and I'm gonna go ahead and sync these views so I can identify the points. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on the corners basically, and I have to do these in order. So zero, zero, one, one. Do them in any way you want, but they have to follow the same number. All right, so once we have our points identified, I'm gonna go ahead and do the wrapping operation. So I'm gonna right click, and since I already know the node name, I'm gonna to start to type the word wrap, and you can see there's the wrapping node right here. And on the left is going to be your destination model. On the right is gonna be your source model and you have a point correspondences, which is the points we laid out in this previous step. So I'm gonna go ahead and select this. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on compute. You'll be able to see it actually conforming the base mesh around the 3D scan. And I'm not gonna do the other steps here, but at this point I did the subdivisions of the geometry. And obviously that gives me a, if I go back to the viewport 3D, a more detailed mesh. And I would just run that wrapping operation again 
but instead of plugging it to the sources, this is now my new destination, and then I still have my same source that I'm drawing from, but I would go ahead and just run this wrap operation again, but I would slowly get a more and more detailed result. But once I'm done, let's just call this done at this point, I'm gonna right click and do load save, I'm gonna go ahead and do save geometry, and I can go ahead and tell it where I wanna save it to and give it a name. Now on the texture end of things, I wanna go ahead and transfer this texture which again was very ugly as far as how it was laid out. And I want to transfer it to our new mesh. So I'm going to go ahead and right click and do transfer texture. I'm going to go ahead and plug in my source geometry right here, my target geometry right here. And I don't need to exclude any points because this is basically a head and neck mesh for both of these guys. Again, we're starting off with a basic example and get into more complex ones in later videos. And if I go ahead and view this now, this is cleanly laid out. If I want to fill in the gaps, I'll go ahead and do extrapolate image, and I'll plug this guy in, and now you can see the holes are filled. And like the geometry, I'm going to go ahead and do a save image instead of save geometry, and go ahead and write this out to disk. There's a whole lot more to this program that I can fit into this single video. But please go and check out some of the others as they're posted. I'll post links now, and we'll continue this journey into wrap. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you on the next Johnny How-To.